Hey, hey, it's Shamari, and I am back. Um, so I'm Shamari. I'm a relationship and intimacy coach, and I specialize in empowering millennial women to get the confidence and pleasure that they deserve so that they no longer have to settle for lack of satisfaction, especially in relationships. And I do this weekly Q&A um, where I have followers and just random people <laughs> submit questions to me and I go ahead and I answer the things that people really wanna know. Um, so I do this on Mondays and um, that is going to be 3 p.m. Pacific time, 5 p.m. Central time, and 6 Eastern time. Um, and I do my best to do this every week unless there is a holiday, a special occasion, or if I just need a break. Um, so for the past couple of weeks, I have been MIA. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, before we know, it was Valentine's Day. Um, I ended up doing a little bit of a staycation. Um, so um, we were not in a place where I could do this live. And then the following week was my anniversary. And we were again traveling. We went back to where we got married. We got married in Palm Springs. Um, we eloped. So we had this little spot amongst the wind turbines, the windmills. Um, so we went back there. So I, again, wasn't in a place to do the lives, but um, my intention is to come at you every week and to do these lives so that I can answer some of the questions that I typically get um, because I do get a lot of repeat questions um, and I feel like it would do a service to share that with everyone just in case you have a question and you were scared to ask, embarrassed to ask, or just didn't know if it was appropriate to ask. So I want to jump right into those questions. Um, so the first one, I get this in many variations, many times, all the time. Um, so basically it's, I miss my ex even after insert time. So um, it could be six months, it could be a year, two years, whatever. Um, I get varying months, varying years, depending on who's asking. But I miss my, S, my ex, excuse me. How do I move on? All right, so typically what I recommend when it comes to this, um, I might have mentioned this before, but first we need to disconnect completely from anything that is reminiscent of this person. I feel that a lot of times when people are struggling to get over something is because they're still holding on to something. So whether that is the hope that they'll be back together eventually, whether that's holding on to the future, the ideal that you thought that you were gonna have, um, holding on to something. And if you just think logically about it, you can never move away from something that you're holding, right? So if I'm holding on to something, I'm walking away, but it's coming with me because I'm holding on to it. So that's how I think about this in that you need to disconnect. You need to find a way to let go um, and that's not to say maybe in the future you'll be friends, maybe in the future, or maybe you'll even get back together. But if you really want to move on from the situation, at least in this moment, um, being able to separate yourself from that. So whether you need to block them, mute them, unfollow them, if you have any things that are theirs or things that remind you of them, either getting rid of them or putting them away. So I know um, <laughs> sometimes we don't want to to get rid of things especially if we're a sentimental person or if we like it like if it was an expense gift or something that meant a lot to us in a moment maybe we don't want to get rid of it but putting it away having someone hold on to it for you just until you're in a better space can be helpful because having those everyday reminders those constant reminders them popping up even if I'm not thinking about this person but then I go and I see a picture of them or I watch their story or whatever it is it can bring up a reminder and it can bring up memories and it can lead me down a path of them kind of consuming my mind and my energy again. So as much as you can, you want to make sure that you're kind of separating yourself from that and you do have to keep yourself accountable because ultimately you control whether or not you're checking on them, if you're looking for them, if you're hoping for them. Um, so if you're saying that you're not going to check their social media, you're not going to reach out to them, even if you're, you're lit and you just came from the club, whatever it is. Um, you have to hold yourself accountable for that and have some discipline. And if you say that you're not going to do these things, really making sure that you put things in place to make sure you're not. So whether that's reminders for yourself, little notes for yourself, a friend that's going to check you because, you know, our friends always have our backs. 
if we're doing something that we said we didn't want to do, they'll remind you. Um, so you can utilize that support. Um, you can also pay for support. So if you want a coach or a therapist or something like that, um, you can definitely reach out to me and I'll see what we can do to get you some assistance around that. But I, I would say that's the first thing. Um, and then moving from there, once you feel like you've completely disconnected, spending time to really get to know yourself. Um, sometimes when we're in a relationship, especially if it was a long-term relationship, we can get to know ourselves within that context. So the person that you are within a relationship is not always the person that you are when you're single. Um, and that's not necessarily a good or a bad thing unless it was a toxic, dangerous relationship. Um, but it's just that we grow and we change as our life changes, as things in our life change. So um, you want to kind of like reintroduce yourself to yourself. Like, who are you? What do you like? What do you enjoy? Um, what do you see for yourself? Um, and this is all separate from a relationship. So just as a person, what do I like to do? As a person, what? how do I like to feel? What makes me feel that way? Um, and it shouldn't all be based solely on a relationship. So really kind of getting to know yourself as an individual. And then from there, you can kind of build on that because the more that you separate yourself from a past situation, the more that you get to know yourself today and, and where you are today, um, the more that it becomes easier to separate yourself from the relationship. And typically when a relationship ends, um, there are reasons that it ended. So um, those reasons can be anything. Um, it could be your choice um, maybe they weren't treating you the way that you wanted to be treated and we have to think about that so like yes I'm, i can miss this person they were a part of my life we maybe had some great times but also knowing that maybe they didn't do x y and z when i need x y and z that's something that's really important to me and that was missing so reminding yourself of that um Remind you that maybe you made the right decision and even if it was their decision to leave you um, Ultimately, I don't want to be with somebody who don't want to be with me So it may hurt. It sucks. I know it's not a fun thing It's not a great thing to experience But I, I really don't want to be with someone who doesn't want to be with me because I think that I'm special I'm important and you should feel that way too. You're special. You're important. You're a great person so you should want to be with someone who can appreciate that. And if that person doesn't, it doesn't make you less important or less of a, a special person. It just means that maybe they're not for you. So those are where I would start. Because um, a lot of the people that uh, reach out and are asking, they're saying, oh, I think about them all the time. Or like I still check on them and I, and I have this of theirs or we have these ties and I can't get, I can't stop thinking about them. And it's like, well, you got to let go first um, and you can't make them obviously, but you can set boundaries um, and that's really important. Um, so then second question, we're going to move on to the second one. So this, I get a lot <laughs> and it's, it, it changes what specifically they say. I'm not going to get too much into the specifics, but when it comes to fetishes and kinks and those sorts of things, um, people often reach out to me and they're saying, oh, I do this weird thing, or there's this thing that I'm interested in, um, but I don't know if some people are going to feel weird about it. I don't know if other people feel this way, or is it just me? Am I weird? Um, and things along those lines. And up until now, um, still, I have not received a message regarding any sort of fetish or kink that I never heard of. Something that ha like is so far outside of the realm of something that I would have heard or would have seen previously. So in that regard, I do want to let you all know, I mean, you can still reach out to me and if I can, I will respond. Um, however, no one has said anything weird, like nothing that anyone has ever said has been outside of the box of what I consider commonplace. So I know as a people, we do not talk about these sorts of things. It's taboo um, and it stays taboo because we don't talk about it. But I, I haven't heard anything weird yet. Um, nothing that has shocked me yet. So I want to just kind of make that announcement now. Um, you can try me if you think if you think that you're special and that you came up with something that I just will not 
understand or something that I've never heard of before. But everything that I've heard of is pretty common. Um, and there are different motivations for those sorts of things. And maybe I'll do like a YouTube video or something just because I don't want to say too much about Instagram. But just know I haven't heard anything weird. Um, tons of people probably feel exactly like you are in interested in exactly the same things um, and if the person that you're currently engaging with now is not that doesn't mean that it's weird it just means that that's not their thing and I'm sure if you know the sites and such you will find plenty of people who have similar interests so um, yeah <laughs> Um, we're gonna move on, but I do want to kind of reintroduce myself, make sure you know who I am. I'm Shamari, I'm a relationship and intimacy coach, um, and I do these weekly Q&As just to answer questions that people tend to submit to me, things that people really want to know and maybe um, are afraid to ask in a more uh, public forum, I suppose. I get a lot of messages. Um, so. You can submit your questions. I typically put a post in my story. I try to do it every day, but if I don't do it every day, I do it at least three to four times a week. So if you're watching the stories, you should see where you can submit your questions um, and I'll do my best to get to them. Um, so the next question is, how do you know when someone is the one? So for this, um, I try to kind of take in my personal experience because it's different saying it when when it's you um when you're trying to figure out okay what are the feelings what are the signs um versus just logically speaking like if you can write out all of the things that are important to you and i do this activity with clients i've done it um several times actually and i've done it myself personally um you go ahead and take a paper you can fold it in half on one half of the paper, I want you to write everything that you consider important in the person that you want to spend your life with, or if it's multiple people, persons that you want to spend the rest of your life with, but you want to write down each of those things. And when I do this, typically I recommend that you do mostly characteristics or traits things that have to do with personality, things that have to do with behavior. And then I always say you can get um, two physical characteristics outside of attractive because I think that goes without saying. We all want someone that we're attracted to. Um, so attractive means different things to different people, but if you put attractive, that covers. They, they will look like something I like. Um, but outside of that, you get two characteristics, right? So um, I put like tall and I don't necessarily remember what the other one was at this time, but I, I think it's still have the list. I actually might go back and look just, just to see. But put two physical characteristics. Everything else should be things that you want to know, like as far as their personality, what will they be like? How will they move in the world? What is important to them? and um, your future together, essentially. So all of those characteristics, I want you to write them all out, whether that has to do with um, finances, the type of job, where you want to live, um, if they want to have kids, if they're honest, faithful, you know, all, all the things, right? Write them all out. And then um, once you do that, I want you to like really take it in, make sure that this is an accurate portrayal of the person that you're looking for. And then on the other side of the paper, what I always have people do is describe yourself. And you can utilize the list that's on one side in order to make sure that you have the same traits and or a complementary trait. So the things that you're looking for, you want to make sure that you can also offer because why would this wonderful, great, rich, successful, um, loving, honest person want you if you can't offer them at least that, right? So making sure that first you can also meet that, but then from there, making sure that once you are interacting with people, that they match up to those things that are important to you. And no, you're not necessarily going to get 100% of everything, but it can be most. It is possible to get most of that. And so 
there's that as far as logistically just making sure that you're getting what you're looking for but then it's also just how you feel and I know you hear like when you know you know and I I do kind of believe in that just from personal experience even when things were very difficult um, between my husband and I like I just kind of still knew that he was supposed to be in my life and like this is my person like we just line up in, a, in so many different ways as far as the values morals the way that we see the world the way we want to move in the world and it just matched so easily um, and so I think that using both so obviously feelings because that matters um, that's how that's how we function at this point um, but also making sure that you're getting what you want that's how you know that you're the one and um if they're well let me put it this way so i also say so because you're not going to get 100 percent of what you want at all times um if the things that you are not getting start to feel very heavy um you want to also ask yourself the question if this stays like this forever will i be perfectly content to stay in this situation as it is so if they are doing things or saying things or if something about their personality is contradictory to what you want or it is something that's making you unhappy and if that never changes because we can't make them remember we cannot make them change we cannot do anything for anybody to change they have to make that decision so if they were to stay this way forever would you be okay with it so that is another way that I suggest um, people kind of consider that. And then, I mean, ultimately, I think that most people know. Um, sometimes they just want confirmation or an explanation to justify or to rationalize. Um, but I think those are some good ways that you can kind of figure out if someone is the one. Um, and then we have one last question. I'm gonna answer for today i'm very tired all that traveling so um i did want to make this a little bit quick um but number four um do you think a man is not going to cheat on a woman who's holding him down and is loyal and do i think that a man is not going to cheat on a woman because she's holding him down and loyal no. If a man or a woman or someone who's non-binary, whatever you um, classify yourself as, I think that a person is going to cheat if they're going to cheat. Um, so n very often we can influence p people's behavior. So if we're not meeting their needs or if we're um, upsetting them in any way and, and they feel like they need to um, get back at us or they need to go somewhere else in order to feel fulfilled um, then we can influence them in cheating but there's never anything that makes another person cheat so I would say that even if you're holding somebody down even if you're very loyal very honest you're doing all of the things that they have on their list <laughs> right um, that doesn't mean that they're not going to cheat and I think that if someone does cheat, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're not a good person or that you can't meet their needs. Sometimes it's them being selfish and they just need to have that external validation and that happens a lot. Um, we look for external validation, whether that's getting some likes on your picture, when you go out wanting to see if someone's gonna ask you for your number, somebody's gonna buy you a drink, um, whether that's flirting with people that you have no intention of ever taking seriously, letting um, someone take you on a date um, because you just want somebody to take you out, but you don't really, you don't care about them. You, you don't want to be with them in any way. Um, there's plenty of ways that we seek that validation and cheating is another way that people can seek validation. They feel wanted, they feel important. Um, and that has more to do with them internally when you're seeking that external validation it's because you're missing that validation of self um, so I think that that could be a reason why it could be that there is a break in the relationship something is not working so their needs are not fulfilled maybe yours aren't either maybe you guys are on the same page maybe there's just no satisfaction within the relationship no intimacy 
um, and they get overwhelmed and that's what they choose to do as a response to that. Um, and again, it's not necessarily one person's fault because there's two people in the relationship. So both people should be the ones that are working on it. Um, so there's, like I said, there's a lot of reasons and I don't think that you being the best person on earth is necessarily going to prevent that. But you have to know what those motivations are for that person and understand that first. And then once you understand that, um, if you're both in a place where you want to work on the relationship, um, you can recover from infidelity. Um, but then also, even before it gets to that point, just setting boundaries. Because sometimes I think, too, people may cheat um, in ways that maybe they don't know is cheating. So I know, obviously... If you're having sex with someone else, I think that most people, without permission, that's cheating. I think most people would be clear on that. If you do something without permission, you didn't ask me, we didn't set up this experience, it's cheating. Um, I think that sometimes people don't know that going out with someone, um, maybe going out to dinner or flirting online um, or talking to someone on the phone all the time and all of these other things, someone might consider that cheating, whereas this other person doesn't see it that way. So they may be doing it um, and they might not even be knowing that that's something that bothers you or that's something that you consider a violation. So before it even gets to that point in the beginning of the relationship, these are when we should be setting these boundaries, letting them know these are the things that I believe and these are the things that I'm okay with. These are the things that I'm not okay with. So that is very clear. And then as time goes on, something does happen. It's not that they're doing it because they don't know. Um, they're doing it because and they know. So it gives you a different, it's a different feel. If someone violates my boundary and they have no idea what my boundary is, I can be upset, but I can't have an expectation that they should have known. So it's different when I tell you and you violate it, clearly you know. So it's, it's different. I, I take it a little bit more disrespectfully that you've done it and that you know how I feel about it versus I didn't tell you, my bad. I have to tell you, so I'm going to tell you, so moving forward, now we can act accordingly. So I think that is important to keep in mind. Cheating happens. Um, it's not okay um, if it's not okay with you, but don't think that you can prevent that by being loyal, being honest, being a great match, because that's not necessarily the case. Um, it can help um, in some cases, depending on the person, but that's not a guarantee of anything. And I don't mean to be pessimistic or think that you should expect cheating because you should never expect that to happen. But don't think that anything that you do personally is what causes it, because usually it's not. <laughs> it's not at all and I've cheated before so I know um but again um I'm Shamari. I'm a relationship and intimacy coach. I empower women to get the confidence and pleasure that they deserve so that they no longer settle for lack of satisfaction in relationships. And I do this weekly Q&A. So if you have questions, um, please submit them to me. I do have a running list um, and I try to keep it up for just because I don't like being on here too long. Um, but um, we'll see how that goes as time goes on. So submit your questions. I'm keeping the list. I'll do my best to answer them each week. Um, I put that in my story. So keep a lookout for that. Um, also, if you want more from me, um, I have my easy treat in my bio. So if you go to my bio, you will see all of my services and offerings, everything that I provide. So I can kind of briefly give you a rundown. So if you're interested, you know exactly where to go to find it. So first, I have some free stuff, freebies. Everybody loves a free thing. So the free, free, free. Um, if you look at my easy tree, you'll see one of the things that I have listed there is a uh, physical intimacy types. Um, so if you click on that, there's a full list of different types of physical intimacy. Um, and it also comes with a table in which you can kind of keep up with what you actually enjoy from the list or even things that maybe you come up with on your own, what you enjoy and who you enjoy them with um, so that you can kind of spice things up. Sometimes we get into these ruts, we do the same thing over and over, but sometimes we need something new and exciting. That's how you find out what you like. That's how you keep things interesting. So physical intimacy types list. Um, there's also a sex 
topics list. So I know we say you should be talking about sex. Talk about sex. It's important, especially if you're going to be having sex with someone, right? But sometimes we don't really know what to say. We don't know what we should be talking about. So I did create a list um, to help kind of spark that conversation. Different things that I think is important to be discussing with someone that you are engaging in intercourse with or any type of sexual play. Um, so you can definitely check that out. And then the other freebie is Come Confidently. It's a webinar. It's about an hour long. Um, it's all about confidence. So I give you three strategies for increasing confidence. Um, and it is a little bit of a pull from my course. Um, so you'll get to see a little bit about like the different types of things that I teach. You'll get to see a little bit more of my style of um, sharing information um, and it's free. So like if you go to my easy tree, scroll down to the freebies, you'll see the three freebies listed there. Outside of that, I do have a few things that you need to pay me for. So um, one is a journal. It's called Confidently Have the Pleasure You Deserve Journal. Um, and it is on Amazon. But if you go to my easy tree and you scroll down under um, shop products, um, it is the only one there. Um, and the journal was designed to help you keep track of uh, different things in your life to help you to find links and correlations so that you can better and live the life that you want to live right so um, in there i have tracking for mood for self-care there's tracking for dates and sex so this way as you're completing these charts and it's a year-long thing right so as you're tracking these things you'll see if on days that you're in a better mood if um you are doing more self-care or if you're doing more self-care you notice that your mood is changing or if you're um going on dates if that impacts the amount or the quality of the sex that you're having and things like that so you can better increase the probability that you're having pleasure in your life so not only just with yourself and how you feel if you're feeling good and you notice that you feel good when you are exercising or maybe when you take a bath you feel the best about yourself right but also when it comes to your intimate relationships and if I go on a date I or and I feel romance on that date if I have like a romantic encounter I'm more likely to bust it open at the end of the night um, or maybe not but you're, you're able to see those links. And so that's kind of how I designed the journal. That's what it's for. Um, and like I said, it's the only product listed if you go to my easy tree. Um, and then the last thing and um, that I have offered that's paid is my course. So it's called Better Sex Guide to Confidence, Satisfaction, and Orgasms Without Faking. And the course is a six-month self-paced course so um, it's not designed as six months but you can take as long as you need um, or if you want to rush through it quickly you can do that too but um, it's set up with a ton of information in order for you to increase confidence to increase relationship satisfaction and um, communication boundaries all of that but obviously also to increase pleasure um, so um, the course is listed there if you go to my easy tree like I said it's the only course the only course the only product um, those are the two things that are paid and then I have a bunch of freebies I also have all my social media listed so if you want to follow me for additional information I share information here for free as well so if you free is your thing um, then definitely stay tuned follow me um and yeah um check the um stories um i'll be posting the uh, little question box throughout the week so if you have questions make sure you're submitting them and like i said i am tired i am so tired 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 so i'm about to go it might take me a little nap before i have to make dinner um but i do hope you enjoy the rest of your evening and see you later